Kiki, je hebt je camera ook aangezet? Nee, dat heb ik niet. Zie je mij? Ik zie uh, jou wel. Wil je, mijn ka- wil, je, wil je mij zien via je camera? Denk je dat het beter is? Nee, nee. Ik kan jou nu niet meer zien. Ja. Ja, is dat zo? Nu toch niet. Of ja, jouw microfoon dan. Dat is jouw microfoon inderdaad ook. Of toch niet? Okay, so if I just start talking now, can everybody hear me? Ah, fantastic. Okay. Um, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Kiki, can you hear me? I can hear you, indeed. Okay. Good morning. All right. Good afternoon. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for um, for joining us today. Um, uh, my name is uh, Chris Achten. Um, I'm the international student recruiter for KDG University College here in Antwerp. And I'm joined today uh, by Kiki Kamps, who's one of our admissions officers here on the campus uh, Groenplaats in the heart of Antwerp. And um, it's lovely for us to, to have a, this opportunity to talk to you today. Um, we were uh, under the impression that we're going to have um, a conversation with you or at least with some of you. Um, we have a whole bunch of questions prepared here um, that we might want to ask you, how we can help you, what we can do for you to help us in recruiting students um, in this final spring push we have going at this moment. Uh, you may be aware that we have um, an appropriate deadline for applications, which is in two days from now. So the 15th of May, our um, applications close for the next academic year for non-EU students. So we have two more days for uh, students to apply and then they'll have five more days to send us the required documents. And um, well, we're, we're here to help you out um, with anything we can to, to help you uh, find the right students for these two degree programs that we offer in English, being um, international business and multimedia and communications technology. So, well, we're, uh, we're taking questions or if somebody's uh, willing to, to talk to us, um, we're here for you. Mm-hmm.
Mega, thank you very much. Um, um, let's start with um, the programs themselves. So we have two um, bachelor's uh, degrees that are uh, taught in English, uh, international classrooms. So for these two degree programs, we aim for a um, 50-50 um, composition, 50% international students and 50% local students. Um, since I have a request for video, here's me. Good morning. And well, the sun is shining here in uh, Antwerp. And there's Kiki. <laughs> Good morning. Um, so uh, two degree programs in English. One of them, uh, international business. Um, and the other one, multimedia and communication technology. Um, international business is uh, a three-year program. And so is multimedia communication technology. Um, IBS, as we call it, International Business, has been around, I think, for five years now. And um, it's really an... Um, exhaustive introduction to all the necessary skills to do business in the global marketplace. Um, the second year, we really focus on the, um, the ins and outs of doing international business, uh, really hands-on learning. Um, in small class groups, we I think we have uh, 40 up to 50 people in a class group, so it's really an immersive experience with uh, hands-on experience. Kiki? Okay. Um, Kiki can't hear me at this point, but um, I'm supposing you, you can still hear me. Um, yeah, people are nodding. Okay, and in the last year, um, students really focus on, um, well, real, real life experiences so they um they choose elective subjects in the last year um they go on exchange programs abroad and they're also required to do an internship in a company international students can do this in a local company here in belgium and uh, local students need to go abroad um, in that way we really uh, strive to have this um, international business uh, degree program to be as much a reflection of what it's really like to be to be doing business in an international marketplace. Um, multimedia communication technology is a new program that is being launched this September, uh, so uh, we're still recruiting students for that. Um, and this is really a program that is aimed for uh, or aimed at what we call digital nomads, so people who basically can run. A business from their computer uh, people who know how to program websites how to build applications um, growth hackers innovators um, and it's really a, a degree program that combines creativity technology and entrepreneurship so we're we're helping um, ours to become digital entrepreneurs um, the first year which is being launched now will consist of uh, five modules five master classes, uh, five sprints, um, each of them taught by an expert, an international expert that we're flying in. They're all project-based and really um, hands-on practical skills, uh, like programming, like um, uh, artificial intelligence, virtual reality, um, real-life learning for um, digital skills. In the second year, we'll focus on user experience, uh, creativity and design. And in the last year, our students can either do an internship in a startup company or they can start up their own company in which they will be coached by our coaches within the degree program. Um, you may be aware that Antwerp is one of the, the largest startup hubs in Europe. We have um, um, several initiatives uh, hosted by the city of Antwerp that really help startup uh, tech company to launch quickly to find um, the funds quickly so they can uh, become scale-ups quite uh, easily. And Antwerp is ideally located for that. We're an international port. Um, it's one of the most multinational countries in the world. We have um, more than 170 nationalities living here in Antwerp. A total population of 500,000 people, um, quite a wealthy city where um, entrepreneurship and, and global thinking are really um, very well ingrained. Uh, we've been on the crossroads of Europe uh, for many years, and it's really an excellent place to to launch a business. A business. So that's why we're um, we're pushing these two um, 
programs also in English because we feel that Antwerp really can make a difference in the uh, international marketplace. Um, so that's that's a, um, a brief outline of these two degree programs. For IBS, international business, uh, we're doing quite well with students for the next academic year. For multimedia and communication technology, we uh, need more students um, for us to run this program next year. We need a few more uh, international students. So it was our hope that you could help us uh, find them. And um, I'd like to um, invite Kiki to share a little bit with you about the admissions process and how we can help students find a way to KDG. Kiki. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> um, indeed, we would need a bit more students to open up the MCT program. So it would be great if you could, if you guys could find some extra students uh, before um, the 15th. Um, the death, death on of the 15th is basically the application form. So the admission process consists of a few parts. And the most important one is the application form. Um, to start with, there's quite a, a straightforward application form via Google um, Google form, basically, and with an end part with a motivational statement, which is important, but not too, imp too important, to be honest. Um, so a few lines will do the trick, to be honest. Um, it is important then to send out an email um, with the extra documents we need as well, passport, um, the diploma files, of course, um, the A-levels, the language files, um, and uh, to give you a bit, a bit more information about the language part, because many questions come in from that and many doubts as well. Um, we we um, accept a TOEFL test, IELTS test, um, with a few scores um, which are, could be found on, on our website and our brochure. Um, but B2 in general is accepted. Um, important to let you know is that um, we have as well, we give you the offer um, to participate in a free language test as well on KDG online, but then students would need to have like a minimum of four years of English at high school or two years at university level. So three years is not accepted, we definitely four years. And the proof we accept for that are just the, the great transcripts. Um, there are many students who send us as well as uh, like a, a statement of a professor that they, their English is enough or something, um, but that's not sufficient. We definitely need, need um, like proof of the transcripts. Um, I'm just checking whether there are any questions in between. Um, there are no any relevant background um, requirements for the media program. Um, I see this question by... Uh, um, Miss James. Um, so basically, everyone can participate as long as the A levels or like the, the, the diploma is sufficient, and the A levels should be um, at least three courses with a minimum score of two Bs. Um, and of course, our diploma um, officers will check it in, in detail uh, later on. So I can't really say whether we really accept it or not, but that's something we need to, to go in depth uh, for. Um, for the diploma officers. Um, but this is basically like the, the procedures. So the application form, the passport, the language files, diploma files, and then at the end, you can get accepted and we'll send out a letter of acceptance um, to end with. So that's basically, I guess, the application procedure. Quite straightforward, uh, not too difficult. Um, any other questions? <clears throat> uh, thanks, Kiki. For, um, uh, I see uh, there are a few people, people typing. typing. Is there any test or Skype conducted? Yes. Um, well, as I said, indeed, normally we do, we would only accept a TOEFL or an IELTS, but we give the extra service to do a Skype for the semi natives. And Indian uh, students are often semi native because they have done English for many years. Um, and that's why we offer the opportunity to to give like a, a free Skype test, um, but only when they've done like for four years in high school in English or two years at university level. So we need to get the proof of that for sure, uh, like I said early on. Um, so great transcripts are the only accepted proof right now. Um, so yes, 
there are Skype tests conducted if they can't, uh, they want, don't want to um, do the TOEFL or the IELTS, which are quite expensive often. So, um, accommodation indeed. I see that Chris is already answering via chat as well. Um, at the moment, we don't have any um, accommodation services. However, um, we have a new serving and housing officer right now um, this year. So um, we're setting it up. But uh, so if you have questions, of course, feel free to, to send them to us. We'll do our best to assist you guys. Um, but we don't have any on campus housing, unfortunately. Um, maybe Chris can say a bit more about the housing, I guess. So Antwerp um, really is a student city. We have a, pop, a student population of uh, over 44,000 students here in Antwerp. So there is um, plenty of uh, places for, for students to stay. Um, well, not all these students are international students, I should say. Some of them still live with their parents. Uh, so not all, all of them are living in the city, but it's a very um, active student community. And there is a whole network of um, places to stay for students. You can find um, a room for as low as um, 350 euros a month. Um, and a studio would go up to 400, maybe 450 euros a month. Um, but there's a lot on offer from for all budgets, really. Um, and as Kiki said, we have a, a housing officer to help you with any uh, specific queries and to help really assist students, including students, to find a place to stay. Um, um, what was it going to say about Antwerp? Yeah, it's a very, um, we, we feel um, in, you know, Belgium is a very small country, especially compared to India, which is a, a continent in its own. Um, and for us, Antwerp feels like a big city, but on a global scale, it really is a small city. 500,000 500, people may sound like a lot, but we, um, we often call um, Antwerp a pocket-sized metropolis. It feels like a big city. It feels a bit like Amsterdam, like New York, um, two cities actually that have been founded by people from Antwerp, incidentally. Um, however, Antwerp is much smaller, and you can really get uh, you can really get from one end of the city to the other end um, in 20 minutes, 25 minutes on a bike, uh, and even on foot, it takes you less than one hour to to really cross the whole city. So it's a small place, and there's plenty of uh, housing um, available for uh, all budgets. Okay, uh, international business indeed also is a three-year uh, program just as uh, multimedia communication technology is indeed. And there is the option for students to combine years, so uh, it's also possible to, to uh, spread the program over more than three years, but ideally you can finish it in three years. There's something else that's maybe good to, to mention. As soon as um, your students are accepted by us, it's, it's good to pay as soon as possible the tuition fees, not for us, but for um, the students themselves, because then they will get, the sooner they pay, the sooner they'll get a letter of acceptance and the sooner they can start their visa. And the Indian visa um, to, go, to come to Belgium is quite um, complex. It could be complex. So it's always better to start as soon as possible. And of course, we're here to help as well. Um, Silka, our visa officer, um, will do our, her best uh, as well to help you. Um, so even then, there is... Um, somebody who could support. Um, I see another question. Let's see how long will it take to get the offer from the date of application submission? Oh, yeah, that's a good question indeed. Um, that differs because um, um, normally we try to, I'm doing all the emails which are coming in. So basically, I will try to answer all questions within 48 hours. I will, um, so once the students submit the application form, and it depends on whether the application file basically is complete so it's it's important that the student um, send in all the documents required otherwise I'll have to send another email like it's not complete um, and then it will take a while to go back and forth 
forth um, getting all the required documents. But just let's say that the application is complete and he, he or she submits the form and the requested documents, then I'll send everything to our diploma checker basically. And then it can take up to two weeks maximum, I would say. And I can speed it up a, a bit for the Indian students um, for sure. <laughs> um, so I will I'll do my best um, in that sense. Um, so say it will take two weeks maximum and then it depends on whether they have sent in a TOEFL on IELTS, then it goes quick because then I can accept them straight away. But if they need to do a like a Skype test, um, then it will take another week or so because I need to schedule them. And the only tests available right now are um, let's say I just wrote them down on 17th of May, so will that not be possible? So I guess the latest one will be 1906, but if possible, I will try to um, figure out an extra language test. Um, I will do my best because we have to organize that um, with three professors. So, um, but of course, um, we'll do, uh, we'll go the extra mile for you all. Um, yeah. So then it can take a while, but say um, they, they submit everything and they pass the test or they send in the TOEFL, I can send them straight away the letter of acceptance and the payment instructions, of course. Um, but that's up to them how, how fast they pay. Um, so say maximum four weeks time, I would say, and the quickest two weeks or one and a half week if possible, yeah. I hope that answers your question. Um, I saw a question about the, the bachelor study program. So, uh, well, we have two bachelor uh, degree programs that we offer, and both of them have a, um, an internship included in the program. So the idea is that um, students studying international business, um, they need to do an internship within an international company. International. Um, meaning that local students, students from Belgium, they have to go abroad. So they have to go to another country, either within Europe or uh, outside of Europe, to do this internship. Students who are coming in from another country, like Indian students, they can, they can choose. Either they do the internship with a local company here in Belgium, a company that does international business, but they can work here, do the internship in the, the offices in Belgium, or they can go abroad as well. So they can also go for an internship in another country, either within Europe or outside of Europe. Um, you may also be familiar with uh, Erasmus, the exchange programs. So um, we, we're also part of the Erasmus network. And for our students, all of our students, so also international students, there's the, uh, the opportunity to um, do a semester or several months in another European university. So students coming to study international business or multimedia communication technology here in Antwerp, they actually get at least two uh, international experiences. So one here in Antwerp, where we have an international classroom. Um, so 50% of your classroom will be people from all over the world, but you also get to do an internship in an international company, either here in Belgium or abroad. Um, the students uh, in the multimedia and communication technology, they can choose to do an internship within um, a tech company or they can decide to set up their own company because we're really training them to be entrepreneurs as well. And if they decide to launch their own startup, we'll uh, spend the last uh, six months of the degree program coaching them, setting up their own business. Uh, Kiki, can you say something about the proof of solvency? Absolutely. That's um, quite important for Indian students, I would say, and even non-EU students in general, um, to speed up the process for visa. So as soon as they've paid and get their letter of acceptance, they can go to the embassy to apply the visa. And to speed it up, um, they often need to show um, that they have sufficient funding. So they can work with a sponsor um, to show that the sponsor has sufficient funding um, to pay for the students um, or the students themselves, of course, if they have plenty of money. But um, 9,000 euros is not enough to basically have in your account. So it needs to be a good job and not even a sales job because then there's no, not enough proof that they um, have like sufficient funding per month. 
um, but only like once 9,000 euros, which is not, not enough. So that's why we offer the proof of solvency um, procedure. So how does it work? They basically pay 9,200 euros, which is quite some money on a bank account on KDG. And um, they get the proof from our side that they have paid it and that they can use this um, as uh, proof of sufficient funding for the visa for the embassy, um, which helps absolutely to speed up the process. And once they're here, they get um, month per month like a certain um, amount of money on their bank account once they're here. Um, and the first, I guess the first month, two months, it will be double um, because they need to pay uh, insurance and everything. Of course, when you, you hear you have a, a bit more extra cost than the rest of the months, basically. Um, so yes, we absolutely recommend students to use, make use of the proof of solvency um, to speed it up, for sure. Any questions concerning this? I guess um, I will forward in the future as well to Silk, our new housing and visa officers. Uh, but for now, we're still picking this up, Sophie and I. Um, so uh, we, if there are any questions concerning this, just let us know. And other questions I've seen is if the student is having two or three year gap after his higher educate, uh, secondary education, is this acceptable? Um, Basically, yes, I guess, from our side. I mean, as long as they have, have, have a higher education diploma, that's absolutely fine. Um, I even had today a, a person who was 45 applying who had a, a longer gap year than, than two or three years. So absolutely, I mean, uh, we absolutely welcome everyone to our program, even if this is a 30-year gap, I would say. Um, Yes, as long as they have a, a certain diploma, we'll, we'll accept it in our program. I'm, I can't go in, um, in details on what diplomas exactly are uh, accepted because our diploma officers will do this uh, for us. Um, but normally, a secondary education should be fine if it gives access to a higher education bachelor. I see uh, two more people typing questions. Um, so while while they're typing, I'll I'll say a bit more about uh, KDG. Maybe you've you've seen our baseline um, in um, in English. How will you make a difference? And here at KDG, uh, we really feel that we're making a difference. That we are um, a different university college than um, many others in Belgium and maybe even outside of Belgium. Um, you, you could say that in many ways KDG is like a like a boutique hotel. Um, a boutique university where we're small, relatively small, um, but yet we have 13,000 students, but also we have a lot of staff. We have a ratio of one staff member for 10 students. So this means that, um, for instance, I'm a lecturer as well, and I know all my students personally. Um, and we're really student-centered people. The students here, they really can can approach their, their lecturers and the staff were pretty much any questions they might have. And we really feel that the students are at the center of what we're about. We're just here to, to help them have a great learning experience. Um, and you, you'll find that the staff really is willing to go the extra mile, not just the lecturers, but basically everyone within KDG. Because um, we really feel that we want to make a difference. And um, we do this by um, focusing on what we're really good at. We don't want to be the biggest one, but we really want to be the one that makes the most change in the students' lives. So uh, that's also why you see that the tuition fees are relatively low, only 6,000 euros, which is a lot uh, cheaper than a lot of our uh, competition. Yet, actually, we feel that you get a lot more. Because we're uh, smaller than the competition, we can really focus on what the students need. And especially our uh, international students, they're really, um, well, our student population, a part of our student population that we really cherish and that we really want to feel um, give as warm a welcome as possible so they'll be treated with uh, extra uh, due diligence just like our agents in india um i see two more questions is there an application fee that's the one for kiki um yes um the, stu uh, the question about um support for students so we have a student entrepreneurship center here so if a student wants to set up um, a startup company wants to set up his or her own company we will definitely help with that we have coaches to, 
to help students with that. And they're familiar with local legislation. However, um, we're, uh, we can guarantee that a student um, can get a, a stay back visa. That is something that is with, uh, outside of the scope of our services. We, we can make any promises in that where we will help students either set up their own um, company or help them find um, find um, a place in a company they, they want to work with. Um, and um, we do have a career office here on campus. So we really have people helping students find career opportunities for them, either within Belgium or um, in the global marketplace. Um, internships, uh, indeed, uh, IBS students and multimedia communication technologies. Uh, internships are actually part of the program. So they have to do an internship before they graduate. They need to get real life experience and not just experiences in the classrooms. Um, Kiki, did you want to talk yeah. about the application fee? There is none. <laughs> there is no application fee. Um, we will maybe in have an application fee as of next year, but for this year there is no application fee yet. So um, I, I'm not sure how it will look like next year, um, but that's something we'll have to pick up from there, I guess. Um, but for now, there's not no uh, no fee included. Um, any pickup services from the students from the airport? We we're just talking about that. I think you can you can pick over right the question. Mm. Uh, well, on the way to the, to this meeting room, uh, Kiki and I were um, were saying that it would be a really nice extra service uh, for students to be picked up uh, at the airport. I remember the first time I landed in uh, I landed in uh, Delhi. Um, somewhere around midnight and um, on top of the culture shock, there was also the um, the airport shock and uh, daily by midnight uh, <laughs> shock. We had to so like this experience again. I have first hand experience of um, how nice it, it would have been to have been uh, picked up um, from Absolutely. the airport. Um, and um, we were talking about how we should make this something uh, structural, that we should uh, set up a service that every student that, um, that comes in from abroad should be picked up either by us or by our student ambassadors or by um, some uh, city representative. But um, yeah, I'm willing to go the extra mile right now and uh, offer you that any students that are um, sent to us uh, through um, the people that we're talking to today, I will personally go and pick them up from the airport because I feel um, how nice it is to have a familiar face waiting for you at the airport. So uh, if you can get a students uh, by September uh, this year, I will personally come and pick them up from the airport in Brussels. Mm -hmm. Wow, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> um, any scholarships for international students? Not at the moment. That's another thing we, we want to start working on. Absolutely. Um, so I only started in this position two months ago. Up until last year, uh, IBS was the only international program we had. And then it was just our lecturers doing the recruiting while they were on trips abroad. And only since two months have we centralized uh, recruitment, recruitment strategy, uh, admission strategy. So um, this is really on the agenda for the next year. And what I want to do is to set up uh, collaborations with corporates, corporate companies here in Belgium. Uh, and for them, that would be an excellent way to actually recruit interns and to recruit staff. So we want to set up a network of uh, scholarships for students in collaboration with local companies so they can handpick the best talent for their company. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping that when we have this conversation next year that I can um, affirm to you that we have these scholarships. Right now, not yet. Not yet. Sorry. Any other questions at this point? Do you feel that you know enough about Belgium? Um, do you already have you already sent students to to us? Um, maybe you, you could share some of their concerns, questions they had, questions you might have about what it's like to, to study and live in Belgium in Antwerp. Any other questions? Um, since we're waiting for, um, for people to type their questions, I would also warmly invite you um, to um, to convince students who are still 
not sure if they really uh, are able to to start these programs now to already apply so they have two more days to apply and then they'll have five more days to upload the document so uh, we, we warmly invite them to apply it only takes 15 minutes it's just an online form that they fill out there's no strings attached but they will be in our system and uh, we can help them um, go through the uh, application process much more easily Absolutely. once we have a point of contact with them. So even if they're still in doubt, if they, they have more questions, just have them fill out the application form and then we'll be in touch with you, the local agent, or if you want us, we, we can have a chat with the students ourselves uh, to help them make the right decision. We want them to make a decision that's good for them. But if they're not in the funnel, so they, they should register within two days. Uh, well, it's... Um, It'll, they'll be in next year's funnel. But if they want to be part of this year's funnel, they need to mm -hmm. register or apply within two days. Absolutely. Even if they doubt on, on the diploma files or everything, just send them along. We'll have a, a small investigation on their file. So just send it as soon as they, they have any, what would just a doubt to apply. It's better to just apply via the form and then send in later the documents. Um, I think it's they've just got five extra days, so uh, should be enough to scan everything and to send everything along, I guess. Ooh, when's the class comment date for September intake? Um, I'm not sure whether I have the exact details. We should have the exact details. I'm just going to look that up. Uh, classes begin, um, if I'm not mistaken, in the week of the 22nd of September. Um, so the last week or the, the third week of September. That's that's usually when when classes start. Um, we work with uh, two semesters in the year. So um, and each semester is divided in two periods. So we work with um, a six-week block, and then you have two weeks um, time off and some exams. And then six more weeks. Then a longer period, so that's over Christmas. There's uh, the exams that um, uh, wrap up the first semester. And then in the second half of the year, we repeat this. So six weeks of uh, class, then a short period of exams, and then six weeks of class and exams. If you have an internship, it's either for these six weeks or, um, or longer than that. The orientation days of international business will be at the 12 and 13, but indeed on 16 and 17 we'll start classes, I guess. Yes. Okay, 16 and 17 of September. Um, orientation day is the 12th, so uh, international students, well, it would be really good if they could join us for the uh, orientation days. Um, so I can pick them up from the airport and they can already get to know each other in the in my car on the way home <laughs> uh, but also the orientation days they're really um, an excellent way for students to um, well to really to to, to um, get familiar with um, what it's like to live and study in Antwerp and and what what KDG is all about because once classes have started uh, things really get uh, moving quickly so uh, if you can have students join us before the 12th of September or on the 12th that That's would great. be great yeah uh kiki a question about the visa process unfortunately i don't know anything about the visa process in detail because that's part of the student's responsibility as the last couple of years however we have now a visa officer who is um, trying to help out students this year already we're increasing our support it was already good but we just want to go the extra mile and especially for the indian students so if there are any specific questions, um, students can can put this in an email to us and we'll try to answer them as soon as possible. But um, as far as I know, unfortunately, we don't have um, specific um, information on the embassy. Um, so it's not, not a question I can answer straight away like that. Um, but as far as I know, the proof of solvency is quite important. But we had a long time ago, we had a, a few um, students who um, didn't go through um, the visa process because of the the funding um, and with the proof of solvency it helped getting their visa and to speed it up especially once they're, the files are here in Belgium um, so that helps absolutely so I would recommend students uh, to go for the proof of solvency procedure instead of the sponsorship procedure 
um, but I don't have specific details on the on the on the visa procedure, unfortunately. Mm. The um, question on the the um, how long is the stay back option for international students? I'm afraid I'm not really know what the stay back option is. We can but we can check that in, in in the meantime indeed. Yeah. I think he's going to, to check that for you. Um well she'll be back with an uh, with an answer shortly. Um you have any other questions about the programs, about what KDG is about, what we can do for you. Um, so that, that's also a, a question I want to ask you today, actually. Um, what would help you recruit the right students for us? What, what can we do for you? What materials do you need? What extra information do you need? Um, how often should we have these conversations? How can we help you find the right students for us? And I'm really, I'm really looking forward to hearing your input on this because, like I said, uh, this is a new territory for KDG, and we're really willing to learn from um, from you who have much more experience in the field. Um, so yeah, any um, anything that would help, we'd we'd love to hear from you. Okay, the average monthly living cost. Um, like I said. Um, uh, a room would be uh, around 400, 350, up to 400 euros. A meal, um, a student meal, well, you can have a, a proper meal for under 10 euros. Um, so I think, Kiki, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you'll, you'll manage with under 1,000 euros a month uh, for all your expenses, for living, eating, uh, prob probably even less than that. Um, because if they use the proof of solvency procedure, they get, I guess, seven fifty a month um, from the bank back again. So that should be doable, absolutely. Housing is not so expensive here. Of course, you can make it. You 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 can have a fancy room, of course, which is more expensive. But just normal rooms are three fifty or four hundred. Chris, I think you're more expensive. Yeah, than yeah, this yeah, that's what I said. yeah, three fifty. Yeah. Okay, great question. Thank you. <clears throat> I just got an answer back from on the question, how long is the stay back option for international students? Um, currently, Belgium has no stay back option, but we've requested for this to be changed. However, this is a political decision, so we have little control over it, I'm afraid. That's what my colleague just uh, wrote me. Um, so indeed, um, I wish it was possible, and I, we get the question um, quite often from other non-EU um, students, indeed. Um, but we just have no control over it. I wish we had. Um, but a career office would have help, of course. So we do have a career office um, since I think a year even. So our support team is growing and growing. So the, it will only get better. Um, so yeah, I hope we can uh, we can we can help them. Okay, uh, a question about uh, our location. We are in uh, Antwerp, indeed, Antwerp, um, the largest city in Flanders. Flanders is the northern part of Belgium, the part where uh, we speak Dutch as our first language. But you'll find that uh, almost everyone speaks English quite well, uh, especially here in Antwerp. It's a very cosmopolitan city. Uh, I mentioned earlier that Amsterdam was founded by people from Antwerp and New York was founded by people from Amsterdam. Uh, you speak all New Amsterdam and you'll find that um, Antwerp is in, in atmosphere, in, in uh, global outlook, very much like those uh, much larger cities. Um, so we have half a million inhabitants. We have the second most nationalities in the world. So it's a very multicultural city, uh, very manageable. It's small. You can can bike or walk pretty much everywhere within 20 25 minutes um, we're a student city um, more than 44,000 full-time students and Antwerp really is known as a city of enterprise of innovation um, of global business uh, even in the, in the 16th century we had um, uh, 
European diplomats that would choose Antwerp as their home base, but still nowadays, Belgium is the where the headquarters of NATO is. Uh, the European Union is based in Belgium, and Antwerp is just a, a 30 minute train ride away from our capital, Brussels. It's, um, I think, an hour and a half to Amsterdam, uh, two hours to Paris, and two hours to London. So we're really within striking distance of all these uh, much more expensive cities in, uh, in Europe. Um, Antwerp also really is a prototyping city in that sense that uh, people in Antwerp are willing to take risks and are willing to invest in products or in services that they believe in. But and that's why many uh, companies actually choose Antwerp to test new products. So, for instance, the BMW, BMW uh, i8, when the new model was being tested, they did so in Antwerp because people in Antwerp do have the money to test these vehicles and they really are quite uh, not sparing with their criticism, constructive criticism, I have to say. Um, also, you may have heard of a festival called Tomorrowland. Uh, I think it was, um, well, for the maybe fifth time awarded the best festival in the world. It's a festival that was uh, launched here in Antwerp and still every year it's hosted here in Antwerp. Um, you might also be interested to know that Antwerp is the world's uh, diamond capital. We have a huge um, uh, population here from India, uh, people working in the diamond industry and roughly 80% of all the diamonds being traded in the world or even existing in the world um, have been traded here in Antwerp. So we really have um, a tradition of doing global business and there is a strong uh, Indian population here uh, in Antwerp as well. And some excellent Indian restaurants, I should say, too. Yeah. There's one just around the corner from the campus, I see Kiki smiling. Um, so we think of you uh, people in India very often. Like, uh, and we'd love to invite more um, Indian students to our university. Um, what else should I say about Antwerp? That's pretty much what I had noted down. On our website, you'll you'll find some um, some really nice uh, video material on the city of Antwerp. You'll see what the architecture is like, how people get around. Um, people really live um, uh, in the city, so people don't tend to stay indoors and and. Uh, live behind locked doors. People really like to go out, have drinks together, have a, uh, have a nice meal together, and students do so too. So we, we really have an active student community um, that is really out and about all day. So um, for international students, it won't be that difficult to actually join um, their fellow students. We also have a student club, the KBG Ambassadors, which is um, a group of international students that are um, hosting events for um, our new international students. And it's it's quite a closely knit uh, community, the internationals here in Antwerp. Um, any other questions about Antwerp, Belgium, registration, admission? Again, I might have a question for you. Um, how realistic is it, do you think, that we have this uh, one week window now for uh, recruiting students for um, this new degree program. So we're really looking for more students for multimedia communications technology. How realistic is it for you to uh, maybe have a few students apply for this? A yeah, question about the language requirements. Uh, I think Kiki will, um, will answer that yeah. in a second. Or, well, yeah um yeah so basically um as i told early on our admission procedure consists of a few parts indeed the form the language requirements the passport and the diploma check so the language requirement is quite a an important part of the application um so we expect students to have a a certain level of english b2 um via TOEFL or via IELTS. Those are the only accepted um, tests we, we um, basically um, accept. Um, however, Indian students are often semi-natives, which means that they have done their whole life in English language, have studied in English during their high school and even maybe the higher education. So once they have done four years in high school in the English language, we um, 
offer the opportunity, a free opportunity, to do a Skype test in in um, yeah in in the procedure as well. So um, as soon as they have got the four years in high school or two years in university, um, just send along just send along as well the um, I'm sorry I'm just getting my um, and so as long as they, they sent it basically like a proof of, of two years in English um, of university via a transcript, then we can accept them in a Skype interview. So that's basically, I guess, the complete language requirement. Um, it's quite straightforward. Uh, it's okay. indeed um, maybe indeed important to say that um, once we're still waiting, if students are still waiting for a diploma and they're still graduating this year, um, they can still be accepted and conditionally acceptance. But we would need their diploma, of course, at the end and um, once they start studying here. So we'll do a quick check once they're studying here. So even st students who are um, who are graduating this year, we can conditionally accept, and that's quite important to let you know, I guess. Um, because I understood from Chris that in the India has is gra students are graduating only right now, um, so they can apply even without a diploma. Um, but of course, they need to get obtain a diploma before the start of the semester. Um, otherwise, we are uh, we are not able to officially accept them. Thanks, um, and also thank you very much for um, well. The positive news that you have, uh, you seem to have quite a, a few students who are keen yeah. for the program. I'm seeing uh, it. Yeah, so um, yeah, we're looking forward to welcoming them. Welcoming them. Um, like I said, we're really willing to go the extra mile. So if you could just um, give us a heads up, either through through your network uh, agency network or in any other way, uh, that these students have applied through you, we'll make sure that they're. Um, their process runs smoothly, um, so we'll we'll give them extra attention and make sure that they they get all the information we need uh, they need uh, from us, uh, or we give it to you and you can uh, pass it on to the students, whichever works for you. Um, because I said, uh, like like I said earlier, uh, multimedia communication technology is a new program. We really believe quite strongly in it, but the decision to launch it was made quite late in the year. So now we're really in a sprint to recruit enough students to have a proper international classroom. So uh, you would be of a great help and we would be most grateful if you could help us find um, good students. Good students um, in the sense that we, we really want students uh, that will finish this degree program because it would be really would be a shame if we started now with let's say 10 international students but um, if half of them drop out in the third year there will only be five international students and that would be a shame so we're really aiming for quality we'd much rather have students who are really dedicated to the program and really feel that they made the right choice and um, we'll do whatever we can to to make sure that students um, really feel that they've made the right choice and that they have everything they need from us. Um, okay, we're fully on with the campaigns. Excellent. Fantastic. Um, anything else we can do for you at this point? You'll find a lot of marketing materials on our websites. Uh, on our English website, there's a, a dedicated page to both of these degree programs. You'll find general information about KDG, some video materials about Antwerp about studying in Antwerp uh, we've also sent the brochures for you to print if you want to or you can um, send them out digitally to your contacts um, is there anything else we can do for you at this point no Kiki you still have questions or things you wanted to add not really no, I think it's quite clear. If you don't have any questions, um... someone's typing. So we'll just um, we'll just keep an eye out for all applications coming in from India, and we'll just assume that they've come through uh, this conversation. So any student uh, applying from India, since you're our only agent network that we have in place in India right now, 
uh, students applying from India uh, will assume that they come through you and will give them uh, extra attention and make sure that their uh, application is processed smoothly. Smoothly, I should Will say. students apply via the agent, one per, uh, contact person? Or mm. will it be like separate per student? I'm not sure how, because that was how it worked in the past, I guess. Okay, okay. Via the agency. Okay, well, we have no more questions, I think, at uh, the moment. I mm -hmm. hope this was uh, this was helpful for you. Um, let's let's try and, and do this um, more often. How how often should we do this? And I'm asking the whole group now. How often should we have this conversation? Or when would be a good time in the year to have this conversation? Maybe that's an even better question. Uh, keeping in mind when students graduate, when students start to make up their mind where they might want to study. When would be a good time for us to have this conversation? Yeah. Um, so once uh, once a month or uh, once every two months should definitely be an option, um, because uh, you may have noticed that the uh, the programs are still under development, and next year uh, we're launching the second year of uh, MCT. So um, I, I think it would be a really good idea to, for us to have this conversation. Yeah, every month, every two months. Uh, so we can keep you up to date about what's happening at KDG because we're growing quite uh, quickly and of course we want our agents to be uh, fully aware of what's going on and um, what we're um, what we're trying to do here so yeah I think we could do that every month every two months yep. yeah and we could even invite our student um, services officer uh, for the housing and the visa so absolutely yeah maybe next time we could we could have an international student join us who can kind of share his or her experiences yeah. um our housing officer visa officer or maybe a lecturer um so we're taking requests so if you could just let us know uh, what would be helpful for you um we'll make sure that we'll um, we'll go the extra mile for you yep okay then i think we can say goodbye for now, Kiki. Yes. Anything else you wanted to add? Okay. If you want to ask us another question, you have five more seconds to do so. And if not, we're going to say goodbye for now. I will just write. I will type my email address as well for questions on uh, the admission. So that's maybe. No, no. Let's. Uh, no. Um, with uh, Abdul, we agreed that all communication would go uh, well, uh, through the network. Uh, that's so, uh, maybe better for yeah. the funnel as yeah. well. Yeah. Yes. That that will keep the funnel clear for everybody. So. Um, Let's let's stick to this procedure for now, and Perfect. we'll just see how it goes. Uh, thank you so much for helping us with our um, our sprint, our spring sprint, um, and yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to working together with all of you um, much more intensively over the next months and years. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, have a lovely afternoon, um, and we'll we'll talk soon. All right, and looking forward to welcoming all of your students here in Antwerp, Belgium. Kiki? Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.